uh, freebies or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of going and investing roughly about one lakh uh, rupee, one lakh hundred thousand oh. crores, yeah. In JTA brands, they can very well do it. Number and would this be would this be cost effective also? Obviously, because it is if you install a plant, it, you you will you will forget for the next 25 30 years. No, nothing. Small small maintenance only. So you not you don't have the fuel cost. You don't nothing. have the transportation nothing, replacement. Nothing. Nothing. Huh. So, so just maintenance. Yeah. What is required? Plain maintenance. By repairing alone, we can increase our capacity in the generation to win ten times. Mm -hmm. Imagine others like hydro power. Okay. Our machines are British built, 1940s yes. built. So yes. today you have got much uh, efficient machines, 2010 uh, machines which built by German engineers. Mm -hmm. Instead of producing 50 megawatt, you can produce uh, 100 megawatt using those uh, same water and same. You can you can do that. See, out of this, uh, uh, in, uh, as I said, you know, uh, India should follow the model of what J C Kumar said. Mm -hmm. He has very clearly said, India does not require mass production. India requires production by masses. Mm -hmm. well, the population is so high, high 120 million people. Well, you, you cannot imagine the kind of uh, uh, human resource that our country has got. And you have to distribute everything. You, know, you don't centralize anything. You need to decentralize everything. Starting yes. from electricity production to power and politics. You, should, you need to you know, decentralize everything. Mm -hmm. Let the village sarpanch in a small village decide what sort of energy he wants, how he can produce. There are a lot of models like you know, Anna Azare mm -hmm. has, right. village has been powered 100% by solar power and biomass. There are a lot of models that we could uh, emulate that we can take about. In, in countries like India, which are you know highly solar, people, like which are having uh, tropical countries, which can you know produce electricity from uh, sun. Uh, go to Thar Desert, they lay a 64 by 64 array of matrices of solar power panels. You can produce about 30% of India's uh, power economy. Yeah. That is that no, no vegetation is there, no people resides there, you go there, there's a science, there's a theory behind this, that if you lay 64 kilometer by 64 kilometer matrix of solar panels, you'll be able to produce about 30% of India's power. So do that, invest in that. They are, see that uh, solar power, wind power, biomass are not uh, you know, harmful to the yeah. human. But then you still have issues like, uh, you know, when the solar power panel, has to be changed, then some of those materials are non-biodegradable. No, then now they are not you know, nano-solar technologies which are very uh, you know, rusty and they can it's about 20 years of uh, Okay, so they so have still you know, see, I'm not saying I'm not saying that today solar energy is a solution to India. No, no. You, we have get to uh, yeah, you get into it. You get yes. into the geothermal, you get into the tidal wave. You find out, you have a mix and match of all these things. That's you, right, yeah. that's right. Oh, you forget just nuclear energy today is being only 4,000 megawatt. Maybe is it, is it so that we have become so consumerism oriented? Yeah. We, we don't want to enter the production zone. We, we would rather consume it. Yeah. yeah. It, we have gone into middle class mentality, elitist mentality. Mm -hmm. The entire country is moving towards an elitist mentality. Where they don't bother about what happens to the person who lives near nuclear reactor. Mm -hmm. I want power today, I get it somehow. That is what my mentality mm -hmm. is. But the nuclear power is not like that. It spreads. Yeah, like yeah. How we are seeing this cloud. You can see moving across the Atlantic now. I know when Chernobyl disaster happened, there was radioactivity measured in Kalpara. Uh -huh. Though it can be negligible radioactivity. That's a different but, thing. But that's a radioactivity. Yes. Today, Fukushima's uh, radioactive thing is being measured at San Francisco. In San Francisco, yeah. yes. So now the world is banning food, food products from Japan. They are saying don't import food products from Japan. So we have gone into that level of yes. uh, thing. So the mentality of the people basically needs to have a change. You know. See, first thing I would say, wherever I go, I used to tell this, this death is not an asset which you have inherited from your forefathers. This is a liability which you need to pay with the interest to your future generations. Correct, correct, absolutely. But people today behave as if it's their asset which they have mm -hmm. inherited from their grandfather and father. No, it's not the case. It's a liability. From your, uh, can you tell us a little about Pool Electric Number? Yeah, uh, basically, uh, Pool Electric is a movement. I won't say it's an organization. Anybody can start this in the, the respective districts where they are in. It's a movement which we have, uh, you know, uh, which is a movement starting from the 1980s. It's there. The two people, Nerinjali and Asuran, they founded this movement. After they had a premature death in 2003 and 2004. After which, some of our friends have come together and we have started again the movement. We basically work for sustainable development. Mm -hmm. We are working against nuclear energy. We are working against genetically modified foods. We are working against global warming. So okay. you, you have basically yeah. our fundamental thing is uh, sustainable. sustainable. Okay. As 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 the uh, CEO of Yard Technologies, what what do you focus on in your R&D? Yeah, our Yard Technologies basically it's an R&D organization where we focus on uh, uh, non-renewable energy. 
and some indigenized product development. Uh, we are, we are, our main focus is on the indigenous, you know, indigenized product development. We are also working on a lot of energy, energy conservation uh, techniques which we are into R&D mode. Uh, the idea is basically uh, give the technology which is sustainable and it's a, uh, as a cost effective. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we developed a coffee machine, mm -hmm. which uh, you know, a fresh coffee vending machine, which normally costs you roughly about 2 lakh of rupees when you import, whereas we are able to use that machine for about 65 70,000 rupees. Uh -huh. And what is special about it? It's a, uh, there's a, uh, in any fresh coffee machine, the skewer unit, which mm -hmm. is where the coffee powder is grinded and pressurized. Where it produces the decoction, the coffee is produced there. It, it can dispense roughly about three cups per uh, minute. Whereas imported machines can produce about three cups in two minutes' time. Okay. So this technology we have found out and we have uh, in fact patented it, mm -hmm. and uh, we are trying to supply it for uh, major uh, companies. Okay. And uh, what is your what is your future innovation? Yeah, we are working on uh, uh, renewable sources like long range. Uh, battery cars, uh, we are also working on uh, non-renewable uh, energy, electricity products, we are working on a lot of these things. I see. Probably yeah. in appropriate time we can you know, uh, take yeah. talk in detail about that. Uh, but our focus is on renewable energy, I mean, uh, very, we are very clearly working on renewable energy. Our first product would be a long range zero emission vehicle. Oh wow, okay. That's our first product that we will come out. Basically, uh, taking electric cars, which does about roughly, roughly about 100 kilometers mm -hmm. per charge, we are trying to do it for about 500 kilometers per charge. Mm -hmm. That's what we are planning to work on. It's still in the uh, R&D stage. Right. We, uh, we would come out with the prototype probably in um, six months to a year's time. Now, how would you look at what the SMEs in general, you know, SME community in general are innovating? What is the what kind of route map would you suggest to them? India, unfortunately... Is there any innovation going on in yeah, those sectors? <laughs> India, unfortunately, uh, did a great blunder, I would say, mm -hmm. in opening up in the year 1991. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that uh, privatization or globalization is not required. I'm not saying that way. See, uh, on 19, 1991, Indian industry has thrived since independence roughly about 50, 40-50 years, 47 to 1990 through protected mode. Mm -hmm. They were not exposed to capitally, they were not exposed technology mm -hmm. to the outside world. Mm -hmm. So in one fine evening, Indian government said, no, we are open here. So all the multinational will come, you fight against them. So it is like, as I said, you know, it is like asking the Indian football team to overnight play in a football world cup. Yes. <laughs> it will be beaten by all the countries by a number of goals. Correct, you know, so correct. That, they will be beaten by all the countries by a number of goals. So Indian industry, take like example, you know, Gold Spot, or Dianora, Solid, EC. I mean, these are TVs that we grew when we were yes, kids. Yes. Today you couldn't see them. Mm -hmm. Because they are all you know, taken up or eaten up by the... Vida is the only one that... Survived. Vida and DPL to some extent. DPL... Not the consumer side, but the energy... Energy side, yeah. yes. So if you, if you, if you take uh, the uh, uh, products that were available at that time, Today you couldn't see them. Torino is gone. Yes. Torino. You know, that Torino is a drink there which people used to give when they were sick. Also. Yes, yes. Now it's not gone. Gold, Gold spot is gone. Gold spot is not there. Okay. So where are these products? Solid Air TV is gone. Dynara TV is gone. Keltron is gone. Keltron is gone. So where are these products? So they couldn't withstand the onslaught of the mm. multinational. What the Indian government should have done is, 1990 they would have said, was we will give you 10 years time. 2000 we are going to open up. We are going to open up. The country will be open to all the multinational Upgrade yourself technologically. We will give you the funds. You upgrade yourself. You become a strong. So the multinational company, you be ready to face them. So this is the kind of preparedness that's wrong. See, what happens, unfortunately, globalization works on only larger principles. Mm -hmm. They don't think about the local culture of the people, local ethnic, ethnic values of the people. They don't uh, bother about that. Mm -hmm. So what happened was all the Indian SME sector is being gobbled up by the uh, multinational companies. Or they are becoming ancillaries. Ancillaries. See, not even ancillaries. See, I know, I mean, we are working with uh, most of the automobile majors that uh, has come to India. Most of the suppliers for these automobile companies, which are set up shops in Chennai, the ancillary units are in their own country. Okay. Uh -huh. if, you, if you go to the larger uh, organization which is in uh, Sri Parambuzo, if you go back side of that, you will find only the Korean companies uh, there. Mm -hmm. They are ancillary suppliers for the uh, uh, parent company. So what India has uh, surveyed is 
few companies like TBS Group and like Nasundaram, Brex, Lucas, only few companies have survived that. Muscle which has got that muscle power. See the same model, like the same model they are trying to apply it in agriculture also. That's a dangerous phenomenon. Ten years down the line, there will be no small farmers. There will be only large corporations which will run agriculture factories, mm -hmm. where people will be employed with the PF graduate and all. Okay. And hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> uh, they will they will manufacture only GM foods, genetically modified right, foods, right, right, which is yes. very dangerous to the health. Which is very it's very similar to what is being ha happening, happening in Canada, in Canada and the US, yeah. where you have these huge maize and corn farms exactly, and yeah. cotton fields yeah. and so on. Yes. So it is high time that uh, we wake up, uh, we, we tell, no, at least leave agriculture. See, the entire uh, 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 industry and the entire uh, uh, trade and commerce, only agriculture has got a word culture. No <laughs> other, no other, uh, uh, no other uh, industry has got the word culture, which means agriculture is culturally associated with us. It is not a business. Interesting, okay. interesting. See, if the entire spectrum of agriculture changed, from the green revolution, green revolution time, that the so called green revolution. Till then it was called agriculture. From then slowly it started to move as agri business. Mm -hmm. Today it's called as agri business. Yes, okay, yes. Mostly it is called as agri business. Okay. Uh, which is not correct in terms of uh, giving food security. See, a company in US we could not decide what an Indian uh, person should, should, eat. should eat, but that is going to happen soon. Happening already, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. In some way. Yeah. So we get we get Washington apples and yeah. we get American corn and yeah. those are more popular. More popular. And our the basic mentality of people is we go attracted towards anything which is clean, you know, very Large. nicely polished and you know it kept in wrap. But actually that's not the whole thing. Correct. We don't realize what is inside. Exactly. It. Mm. Whereas uh, so our not not really really may be much better in how this Bangalore tomato was uh, uh, produced, you know that, right? Flavors here. No, it is basically for the uh, salad industry. Correct. Okay, okay. Our uh, country tomato will not, cannot be sliced. Uh -huh. okay. So what they took, they took an enzyme of country tomato, they took an enzyme of potato, and they, and this was Bangalore tomato's uh, origin. Origin. Uh, so it becomes a solid uh, tomato, so you can cut it into slice and keep it as a salad thing. So it was basically for a salad market. The interesting part is, at least here they are combining two plant varieties. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Whereas BT, that is so called yeah, genetically modified. Yeah, that is soil bacteria. No, that is bacteria. That's the this is a bacteria. And it's a soil bacteria. Yeah, which is fed into the brinjal, which they say will, will kill, will not allow the uh, worms, press, uh, ball worm to attack the brinjal. But what will happen to that bacteria that goes into our body? Right, right, absolutely, absolutely, correct. Okay, there have been, uh, there have been research which have found out that Cry AB1, that's a protein which is found in Vt bacteria, mm -hmm. is being found in fetuses of mother after being consumed. Uh, oh my uh -huh. really. So it's a very dangerous phenomenon. Mm -hmm. uh, at least here you are merging two plant varieties. Uh, there's a research which is happening where they are trying to take a, a bacteria from frog and trying to put it in tomato. Because frog, after living in water for a longer time, it is not getting uh, no, spoiled. So they are taking that enzyme and they are trying to inject into brinjal, I mean oh. uh, tomato, and saying that they will have a you know water. Something that lasts yeah. in the water. Oh. But this is very very dangerous. No? Like, yeah. You see, over here you cannot uh, control. Predict it. Yeah. You cannot predict what it does inside the body exactly. or to the ecosystem and yeah. other animals that are eating that. That plant, yeah, and also it will spread. Yeah, see, the, uh, in spreading, I have a thing. Mm -hmm. See, in India, I mean, everybody, uh, the basic science way, everybody knows it's, uh, the the growth happens through pollination. Correct, like, correct. You know, correct. Insects, yeah. They yeah. take the seed and they go. Into it. So, if a farmer who who grows a BT brinjal in a farm, and there's a nearby farmer who doesn't grow BT brinjal in his farm, and if a fly takes a BT seed from this uh, farm to that farm. And if the authorities find a BT, BT brinjal in a non BT field, then they can sue, sue him. Yes, yes, yes. So, which is a very, very dangerous. Uh, so, you don't have a choice. Obviously. Other than to grow what, what, uh, what multinational companies sell, what uh, larger corporations sell. Today, uh, unfortunately, India doesn't have a. India I mean, mostly produces only BT cotton. Mm -hmm. But the incidence of suicides in Vidarbha, in Andhra Pradesh, has rise because of the usage of BT seeds. 
it's a NCR. You say that it's gone up because of that? Obviously, yes. Because you need to pay, let us say, it's Indian farmers are traditionally has the right to produce producers of seeds. The seed is owned by the farmer. Mm -hmm. Today, the seed is owned by multinational corporations. Okay. And it doesn't have a terminate, terminating effect. After yes. two, three things, it will go away. So you need to buy uh, new seeds and then grow. Today, uh, the multinational company which produced the BT cotton has declared BT1 is susceptible to bar bomb. So now oh. they have come out with BT2. BT. Upgrade. Uh, yeah. Isn't that something that even uh, software companies tend to do? Upgrading constantly to keep See, I am told, I am not uh, sure it's true or false. I am told that uh, Intel knows in 2025 what chip they are bring out. Today? Yeah. Uh -huh. So which means they have not revealed that today. And so they, they want reveal it on face yeah. by face basis so yeah. that they can keep yeah. the consumer on board. Yeah. So they know that what chip they have produced in 2025. So would you say that, uh, what then would you say is the way for a small Indian company technology based or non-technology based to go forward? See Indian companies should reinvent themselves and become IT creators. Hmm. That is where they can sustain in this uh, globalized economy. Whether it's an SME or it's a larger Indian company, whoever it is, they should start owning IT. Okay, what, would you, what kind of IT? Anything. Of course, we are an IT company, yeah. but what would you suggest? Anything, you know, starting from renewable energy, pharmacology, uh, uh, solid waste management, so that's a greater threat to the whole world, right? Okay. Somebody, if they can invest money in finding out some good solutions for solid waste management, then phenomenal thing. In renewable energy sources, <coughs> environmental issues. So there's a lot of scope for Indian SMEs to excel in this competitive world. But only thing, they should not become a back office uh, companies. They should become IP creators, IP owners. That's how, see in Israel, I am told uh, there are companies which does support 2,000 patents every year. Uh -huh. um, smaller, so, companies? smaller companies. Okay. They does about 2,000 patents every year. So imagine so the kind of uh, you know, intellectual city, the kind of intellectual hmm. capabilities of that uh, society per se. See, if, um, India or for example, any of us in Tamil Nadu should take an example of Israel as a model how we should uh, I am not saying the methods adopted by them, mm -hmm. but they are a country which is surrounded by uh, all, all by enemies. Yeah, they are surviving in a very, very hotbed environment. They never knew when they will be attacked. Every day there is a fight in the streets of Tel Aviv, but still they are serving as a race because they have got the unity, they have got the intellectual capability. Above that, they are not a back office of any, any, any country. They are okay. themselves individually capable of doing things. So today the unfortunate thing I will tell you. India, India GDP, services sector contribute over 50% of uh, GDP. Imagine to tomorrow in US decides not not outsource to India, they go to Philippines, they go to yes. South Africa, they go to Brazil, and imagine an economic completely for them. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think they are becoming far more competitive exactly, now. Exactly, on pricing and tongue and language. And I, yeah, actually, uh, we had that advantage. Yeah. English. Now we are losing, losing that. Yeah. Hmm. So what happens is, Tomorrow will be nobody's child. Mm -hmm. Today at least you are a US child. Mm -hmm. So US will try to protect you in terms of giving work, giving money, giving income. But tomorrow you become nobody's child. Because US would have removed all the jobs and they have gone to Philippines or South Africa or China, anywhere. Mm -hmm. So what our country should do is more consuming capacity inside the country. That's very, very key. Yes. More production capacity in terms in, in inside the country. Above all, in India should invest a lot of money in rural infrastructure, mm -hmm. agriculture, all these areas, which is our backbone of our economy all these days. We have left it out. Today, agriculture is contributing only about 15 or 16 percent to the GDP, which is a very sad part. And we are also importing, importing. much of what uh, we produce in yeah. India, like wheat, sugar, wheat, oil. Sugar. <laughs> Everything is being imported. So India should slowly turn back. We should go more into more into our rural economy mode, mm -hmm. where even the development is sustainable. Because you know, rural economy is always sustainable more. So we should we should try to consume more within the country, produce more within the country in terms of cars or in terms of uh, potato chips or in terms of uh, rice, wheat, maize, anything. Mm -hmm. It should be it should be completely within our uh, country. The technology should be used. Uh, our our own indigenous technology should be used. We should not. We, India should put a ban. I request through this media. India should put a ban that for the next 10 or 15 years time. India will not conduct any trials on GM foods. Ah, yes, so <laughs> very tough, but yes. Yeah, but, but already we have succeeded in pressurizing 
the environment minister in not allowing the GM uh, BT Brinjal. Yes. Today we are starting a movement on uh, putting a ban on BT maize. Next BT maize is ready. See, the, the most unfortunate thing about this country is everything we have got. Yes. But we don't understand our system. We don't understand our values. We don't understand our ethics. In fact, I think Peru has banned the import of potatoes. Because yeah. It is the because Peru is the origin uh, of potatoes. But we don't. Uh, we don't do that. Peru although, is, although brinjal and rice. Yeah. Rice as well. Today, uh, uh, a month back, the Prime Minister uh, <coughs> spoke in a function that uh, Indians should start consuming more of gold and rice. It's brand called gold. It's a GM rice. Because there is a lot of uh, beta carotene, beta carotene is uh, yes. uh -huh. this golden rice. We need a research on that. If a person has to need uh, X amount of beta carotene, then he has to consume 9 kilos of golden rice every day. <laughs> but isn't that available it's in the like carrot? It's available in carrot, uh, uh, you know, drumstick leaves, yes. no? Munga uh -huh. Munga. That's available. 12,000 right. units is available in uh, Munga Kira. 12,000 units. So what happened? March 15 was a world consumer day. So we sent one basket full of uh, carrots, one basket full of uh, uh, some other thing, papaya, to Prime Minister. <laughs> to consume. To consume. First you consume this, you don't require golden rice okay. for your beta carotene. You consume this, you will be much healthier. Yes. See the basic thing is the politicians, the viewer doesn't understand the whole thing. Mm -hmm. they, see what Mekhala said about 150 years. What, see the, today the education system that we are following is our Mekhala system. Okay. What he said 150 years ago, Indians think is Indians think whichever is foreign is great. Mm -hmm. Whichever is English is great. Indians have the mentality of thinking, whichever is foreign is great. So if India has to be captured, their education system has to be broken down and English has to be taught through that school. That is what happened today. Yes. We have become a, a labor to the English, we have become labor to English companies, we have become labor to all multinational companies. Mm -hmm. We have lost all our uh, grassroots innovative capacity. Is there a way to improve our innovative capacity? Our education system should now start uh, reinventing itself. See, we are producing uh, cyber coolies. Yes. Okay, today, see, tell me one thing. <coughs> The last, uh, uh, I think we are doing an English medium school education the last 30 years time. Mm -hmm. Tell me one uh, paracetamol tablet invented by India. Mm -hmm. Nothing. We couldn't do. We are able to do. Why? Because our, our thinking capacity is uh, mind, it's tuned to work as, hello, I say, I say, how may I help you? Only as BPO, BPO executives, only as call center employees. So we are producing call center, call, center, call, call center generations. We are not producing intellectuals, we are not producing human beings, nothing. Okay, okay, okay. I will not be surprised if another than 10 years time, when all these large corporations will start kindergarten schools, they will start engineering colleges. So somebody can join in LKG, go to college in their own college, join their company for employment and die there. Yes, it could happen. Yeah. It could happen. So is there any other last words that you would like to say about sustainable innovation, innovation for progress? Yeah. See, uh, only thing that I would like to say is uh, whatever you do and whatever the small actions you do, keep uh, environment as a concern in your mind. Mm -hmm. Small things, uh, we are not asking you to change the world tomorrow, no, that, that will not even happen. That. Here and there, some there are some movements here and there. You know, people will get that enlightenment in the, in the larger, in the longer course. Small things you can sort of when you go to a shop to buy grocery, you can carry a bag with you. Correct. There is very very small things that you can do. Mm -hmm. You can switch off lights whenever you are not uh, using. Mm -hmm. You can carpool and go to the to a common place. Mm -hmm. You can use public transport when the, when you go for a family outing, use Absolutely. trains, buses, mm -hmm. and things. So small small things, and you uh, do not. Buy or do not consume or do not keep more than what is required. You don't have to buy 100 saris. You don't have to buy 25 pants and 30 shirts and keep it in your place because consuming too much is against the environment. Mm -hmm. So you use whatever is required, whatever is needed and try to keep environment in mind. Whatever you invent, whatever you do, small, small actions, that's what is required. That can only save our earth from disaster. Absolutely, absolutely. So, thank you very oh, much. Pleasure. And it's been really pleasure talking to you. So.